A Murder at the End of the World, the 2023 mini-series, currently mini-series, spoiler-free review. So, so far, there is only one season, seven episodes of this show, and it is unclear if there will be more than one season. This video will only cover the first season. If there are more, I might do videos down the line, but yeah, just be aware. If you're watching this at some point in the future, it might not cover the entire run, but yeah. Um, I'm going to start by telling you this was a show that I absolutely loved. The, this video will have some jokes, none at the expense of members and minorities, and we'll get into some serious topics. I realize this video is long, and there I can to make it worth your time. This video is a review. I'm almost definitely not going to spoil anything. If I end up deciding to, I'm going to verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger. So un until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead and you see me lower my index finger. If you want my spoiler filled thoughts on individual episodes, the link to them will be in the description box. So this is rated TVMA. According to the IMDb Parents Guide, sex and nudity is mild, so it's violence and gore, profanity, alcohol, drugs and smoking, and frightening and intense scenes. Yeah, there there is some... I, I guess no one episode has so many F-words that the... Oh, right, and I might also swear that, yeah, so many that it would go above a PG-13, but over the course of it, yeah, there's, you know, there's several uh, episodes that have at least one F word in each. I have watched every episode once each. I would say this is probably fine to to binge and yeah so the yeah the season opener is quite good introducing us to the major characters giving us an idea of what it's going to be about and yeah just really yeah setting a, a tone the finale is is great the um, yeah it it resolves everything that it has to i can see how they could do additional seasons but i you know i really appreciate they did actually finish off the this season storyline in this first season at in the finale everything that needs to get wrapped up is wrapped up and the yes so <clears throat> this was created by Zal Batmangli and Britt Marling who also um, yeah wrote and directed episodes uh, in addition to them Sherry DeMoline and Rebecca Roanhorse served as story editors, and Roanhorse also wrote one episode, and Melanie Marnick wrote two episodes. And Britt Marling actually also co stars as the character Lee. And this is the only thing I am familiar with of theirs. I have heard that the OA is very impressive. I would like to, to watch it, which was also, you know, the two of them co-created it, and Britt Marling appears to be one of the stars of that show as well. Now, let's see, I think it is currently on a service that I'm not, that I don't have, uh, let's see... It is on Netflix. I am currently only subscribed to Disney Plus, which is where I watch this, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. 
But, uh, yeah, um, in addition to these two shows, the um, Zal has also directed two episodes of Wayward Pines. He directed Sound of My Voice and The East, which also both sound very interesting. He also helped, He also wrote those two along with the short The Recordist. And Britt Marling, uh, let's see, yeah, yeah, she co-wrote The East and the Sound of My Voice. She also wrote Boxers and Ballerinas and Another Earth. And she has 15 acting credits, including Recordist, Another Earth, Sound of My Voice, The East. Yeah, so just straight up, she acts in everything that they write and direct together, which, yeah, makes a lot of sense. She's clearly really, really good at all three of these things. So this show is incredibly cinematic, with sweeping camera capturing the gorgeous vista of Iceland. The characters are not all necessarily likable, but they're interesting, which, in my opinion, is better. I've long preferred interesting assholes to likable characters. But I appreciate, you know, it's not going to be for everyone. And for sure, if that's the kind of thing that really bugs you, this might just not be a show for you, which which sucks, but, you know, no, nothing is for absolutely everyone. There's strong chemistry between several of the characters, especially the ones who have long-term relationships with each other. There's some great red herrings and clues. We learn a lot about Darby Hall, our protagonist, in a very short amount of time. Same thing for her research partner, Bill Farah, and some of the other major characters. And over the course of it, Darby will work with at least one other person to try to solve the mystery. It's very much like a classic murder mystery where you take a bunch of distinct interesting characters that are very different from each other, preferably played by famous talented actors, so that the audience has no idea which of them turns out to be the killer, since if there was only one really talented recognizable actor, that would probably be the killer. Like, they're not necessarily going to hire that person and then give them nothing, unless that's the misdirect. You know, but if everyone is, you know, talented and recognizable, that makes it much, much, you know, it makes it impossible to deduce based only on that element. And, yeah, you, you bring these characters to an isolated location, one of them is murdered, and you spend the rest of it trying to figure out who did it. It's like an Agatha Christie story, like Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, that sort of thing. But it's present day. It's going into modern issues like climate change and what modern technology does to the world. And the rich guy that got them all there is a tech billionaire. And no, I have not yet watched. Uh, let's see. They're called. The second one's called Glass Onion. And the first one is Knives Out. I would like to. There is tremendous emotional intelligence on display. They clearly did their research in coming up with the characters and their reactions to the thing that things that happen. These are important ingredients to a classic murder mystery. It can be very frustrating if you're watching one that does not have these aspects. Every so often it will go from present day to a flashback of Darby and Bill working on the case that we see them solve very early in the first episode. And there are also flashbacks that go further back. And they do that classic flashback thing of having the flashback set up something, explain something, and then there's a payoff to it in the present day scene that it cuts to. You know, it's very, like, it's the first thing you learn about using flashbacks in fiction, but it works. The various hot-button topics brought up and add personality to the characters and the show, they don't necessarily lead to a satisfying conclusion. Like, I would argue that there's at least one... Two. There's at least two where we do get to a very satisfying conclusion, but some of them really do only serve to add personality to characters and the show itself. And yeah, that can, of course, feel very disappointing. Like, if you sit down and watch a Christopher Nolan movie, he'll bring up at least one hot-button issue per movie, and though you may not agree with the resolution, by the end of the movie, there's going to be a resolution. And the show is honest about men's emotional needs, does not treat that as a weakness, which I really appreciate after most of film history, downplaying or even ignoring 
these needs. And I think that pretty much... I don't want to give too much away about the characters. Uh, let's see, I think... Certainly, I, I do want to talk a little bit about Darby Hart. She is a Gen Z amateur sleuth. And this is the first thing I see Emma Corrine in. And, you know, obviously they have gotten a lot of praise for playing Diana on The Crown. And every, you know, I've only seen clips and heard analysis, but it does sound incredibly impressive you know clearly they are incredibly talented I cannot wait to see them in Deadpool 3 that's yeah so happy to yeah um, they do a fantastic job here there are a lot of great little like in based on the clips I've seen of Diana you know both have this sort of they they can be pensive and deep in thought at times. Darby, being a Gen Z, which, you know, obviously Diana was not, there's, there's this thing of, like, very much she has, she has grown up with a screen in front of her, like, pretty much all, you know, all her life. She has more meaningful relationships through the internet than she does in person, mostly, you know, and she has these little, little ticks and little, like, just the, the way she moves her eyes, the character, the, um, her eyes and just little, you know, she'll, she'll scrunch up her face a little and, and just little things that feel completely, you know, like, I guess, yeah, Emma Corrine, they probably are, uh, let's see, uh, they were born in 1995, uh, Gen Z, let's see, um, yeah, the, the end of the 90s is the start, and, um, hmm, yeah, uh, I guess that means that the character is slightly younger, so, so, yeah, you know, it's not very far off, I guess, millennial, well, whatever, I, I always mix up the generations, but, yeah, the, the, that, uh, along with the fact that, and, and this is not a spoiler, this is revealed very early on, Darby, as, like, basically a child, at least teenager, yeah, I, th I think even as a child, you know, her father, the, the, who, ah, crap, what's the word again? M works at a morgue, he, you know, cuts open bodies, there's a word for it, you, you know what I mean. He took her along to, to crime scenes when she was very little, she's, you know, and and that of course also adds. You know, I, th I think I, f I forget if they say, but I think it was like cheaper than a babysitter kind of thing. You know, and yeah, the the I don't think I want to give away exactly what the situation with is with her mother because I think that's revealed a little bit into the the show. But yeah, you know, she she spent a lot of time around corpses and actually feels fairly comfortable around them and the the yeah very very analytical mind she struggles in like social situations i was wondering a little bit if she's maybe on the spectrum but i think ev all of all of the the little quirks she has can be accounted for based on the unusual way that she grew up now See. Yeah, I definitely don't want to give too much away about at least some of these characters. I'll just say that there are some very varied characters. You know, someone early on points out, 
you know, this is a very interesting group of people. You know, these are not people that would necessarily meet in, in one place. You know, the, the guy who, call, who, who invited everyone out to this secluded place is a tech billionaire. One of the people he in, that, that was invited hates technology. You know, one of them works with the Chinese government, which, you know, obviously it's not that all Chinese people, and certainly not all Asian immigrants to the West, are like, you know, on the side of the Chinese government, but this is a character who literally did, you know, is, yeah, is working with the Chinese government, you know must approve of of their methods which is obviously not the you know not the most popular thing here in in the west and yeah um one of them is a filmmaker another of them is also a, um yeah tech tech guy and i think that is as much as I am willing to, to give away. There's decent diversity in the cast, which, you know, is great. Diversity is our strength. And they do a really good job of actually exploring some of these, you know, how, how their, you know, identity as minorities affects their, you know, perspective. Darby herself says very early that, you know, she's kind of obsessed with trying to, to, like, it's, it hurts her soul that there are so many unidentified bodies in America, especially how vast a number of them are women who were murdered. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that, you know, there, there are men on the show who also, you know, it, it bugs them, but it doesn't necessarily quite drive them the way that it does Darby. And that is about... Right, so the, the dialogue... There are definitely times where it's slightly awkward. They're just, they have to get across some information to the audience. And it, yeah, um, there's some very exposition heavy dialogue. But I will say most of the time it felt like, okay, this is what that person would actually be saying. The mystery is very well, um, very well thought out. It's very clear that they had an answer before they started making the show. This is not one of those things where they like, I don't know, let's just throw something out there and see whatever we, you know, which can be quite frustrating when you're dealing with a, you know, something that you're watching specifically for the, the mystery. And... Uh, let's see. Yes, there are some quite good stunts. Some of this was actually filmed in in Iceland, and yeah, it really does look absolutely amazing. Some stuff was filmed in New Jersey, in Reddington Township, and Kearney. And yeah, it adds a lot of authenticity. And that right, the music is is excellent, and I think almost every single episode had me discover a song that you know now I, I actually sit and listen to. You know, very really really great choices of a licensed score. And yeah, so it's not it's not quite horror. It's sometimes getting 
very close to that. Um, IMDb listed as drama mystery thriller. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now, the individual episodes vary slightly in length. So I'm just going to get the list here. Yeah, uh, some episodes are an hour and 15 minutes. Some are as short as around 40 minutes. Every episode felt like it had the, the length that it should. So I quite appreciate that. It didn't feel like they were... You know, I, I think the show would not have worked as well if they were forced to, let's say, make every episode 42 minutes. You know, the, the network television kind of... Yeah. Now, I think that might be about... Yeah, so the... Yeah, the best element, you know, love that we're still making this kind of murder mystery. I've always been quite fond of, of Agatha Christie. You know, I have on DVD, let's see, it is, yeah, Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, and The Mirror Cracked. Now, The Mirror Cracked is not quite as good as the other two, but the other two are classics, and I recommend them. Yes, I am planning to watch the, the recent remakes. And, yeah, just, you know, the, there are things about them that does, not, not everything has aged well and such, but the core, like, setup is legitimately interesting. You know, it, it's just, you know, the, the human brain, we like to solve puzzles. And, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a while since I sat down and watched something that felt this much like an Agatha Christie. It hasn't been that long since I last watched, you know, let's see, last mystery thing I watched, I guess, was both seasons of Scream Queens, which I also quite enjoyed trying to solve those puzzles. Now, so the, yeah, the worst aspect is probably that, you know, it's it's very eager to bring up some really interesting present-day problems. For some of them, it really doesn't have that much clear to say about them. Now, the... So, so yeah, the stuff that I saw others criticize was that there was too little humor. In general, it's a bit too dark for its own good, which, you know, I, I didn't really feel that way, but, you know, yeah, some people will. And one thing I did agree with, some have said it's a bit padded. Some went as far as saying it should have been a feature film. I would not go quite that far, but I would definitely say maybe a third of it could have been trimmed down. You know, I was never bored, but there's definitely stuff that doesn't really go anywhere and isn't really, it's, yeah. Right, and some people really hated how much it uses the flashbacks to, to Darby and Bill working the Silver Doe case. I thought that always worked, but I can appreciate, especially in the first couple of episodes. I think episodes one and two have a lot. I remember it as being those two. There's at least two episodes that have a lot, and, you know, it's important because it builds their characters and it puts us in the mind space of Darby, which is very important because not every decision she makes is necessarily the very smartest decision. And that's something the show is well aware of. The, the, she has, she sometimes gets obsessed with, with cases and isn't quite careful enough. This is something that's said very, very early on. It's one of the first lines. You know, sometimes she risks her own safety to, to solve a case, which is, of course, you know, that is more interesting to watch than someone who's like, oh, first sign of danger, I'm a skedaddle, you know. But it is very important that we understand why she is like that so that we're not just constantly yelling at the screen for her to make the smart, the smarter 
decision. Because she is a very smart character. She is clearly, she understands a lot and is, yeah, really great at getting to the bottom of things. And that is, of course, also, you know, it's a, it's, it's a fascinating seeming contradiction of, of many smart human beings that, you know, being smart in one way does not mean that you're smart in every way. Some of the smartest people in history have made some incredibly ill-conceived decisions, you know. And, yeah, I, I quite appreciate something. I think, I think the show gets it right. We have to respect intelligence, but we also have to acknowledge the limitations that, you know, not, not just give, give up all our decisions to people who are or are perceived to be smart. And that is, yeah, very, that comes across quite strongly in, in the show. The thing I was most worried about before watching was that it would let down on the mystery front at some point over the run, and it did not. Uh, the, the thing I was most looking forward to was the creative voice behind it, since I heard such good things about the OA. And, yeah, I already mentioned that the season opener and the season finale are great. The overall season is also great. There's no episode that I would, not, not a single episode that I don't love or would recommend skipping. I would not have hated if one or two episodes, they maybe trimmed down a little bit of stuff, but I don't think there's really, I don't think there's a single scene that I would suggest skipping. And let's see. Yeah, I've, I very much hope that either they make more seasons or at the very least that Zal, Badamanglish, and Britt Marling get to keep making this stuff. And and as far as I can tell, this is pretty po popular, as was the OA, so I'm guessing they're going to get to keep making stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really... I hope I am able to watch the, the next thing. And this is one of those cases, like, sometimes some of the, some of the Disney Plus MCU shows, and the Star Wars ones as well, it was kind of like, okay, you're not, you don't need to make a miniseries here, you could just make a movie and, and put in the, you know, and, and that was actually, like, the, the, I believe, I think it was the Obi-Wan show, that was supposed to be a movie, and then Solo bombed. Yeah, they were worried about doing more of these spin-offs, so, yeah, they, they do that to attract people to Disney+, Plus. And I think there's, you know, there's some really great stuff on Disney+, Plus, which does not mean that Disney should not be treating its employees better. But some of this stuff does feel like, okay, you did not need to make a miniseries. This is, this is a movie that's padded. This is not. A Murder at the End of the World is not a movie that's padded, in my opinion, at least. And, you know, I presume that's why you're watching my review in particular. Um, is to hear my opinion, but yeah, I I really think they did a good job using the fact that you have more running time. You know, yeah, like I don't think it's quite seven hours, but it's you know it's approaching seven hours of running time, and that's obvious. Even even like not even James Cameron. Or Martin Scorsese would put seven hours of movie in in just one showing. Now on the uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has an eighty nine percent certified fresh on the tomato meter and a ninety three percent from audiences. Now there's only there's 55 reviews, 49 of them fresh. The average rating is 6.90 out of 10. And there are more than 1,000 ratings by audiences. The average rating is 4.7 out of 5. So, yeah, that's very impressive. And, yeah, so the consensus. Confounding as it is seductive, Murder at the End of the World is a worthy brain teaser for fans of Britt Marling and 
Zalabadamanglish offbeat storytelling. And on Metacritic, it has a 73, generally favorable, out of 100 from critics, 72% positive, 28% mixed out of the 32 reviews, and let's see. Yeah, so one person said twists and turns fizzle into bland exposition dumps. So, sorry, these are the mixed reviews. And let's see. Yeah, and one person was only judging the first two episodes, which you know some some critics were not given all episodes, as far as I understand. Yeah, I can understand that. You know, it, yeah, uh, uh, if you're not. Let's see. I think if by the end of the third episode, if you're not hooked, no, I don't think the, the rest of the show is particularly going to hook you in. And one person says they did not think that the Agatha Christie style, you know, they liked it in Knives Out. They didn't think it worked here. Taking Agatha Christie style and doing a modern... Thing with it and one person says it sags narratively far too often and one person felt few of the characters are fully developed I I wouldn't say few are but I I definitely don't think everyone is I there's a couple of characters that by the end of the seventh episode, I still couldn't say that much about. And let's see. Right, so this, the, the, yeah, uh, this is the, this is the blurb from the IGN review. A murder at the end of the world may tackle climate change, techno-ethics, misogyny, and true crime, but it feels lackluster to thanks to overlong navel-gazing episodes. So again, yeah, I wouldn't quite go that far, but I can definitely uh, appreciate, I, I get why that is, yeah. And yeah, one person says it depends on how you feel about the pairing of Marling and Batmanglish. And one, one person says it's them at their most accessible. And one person says, it often grips, but if you miss it, the world won't end. And uh, Metacritic users gave it a 6.1, generally favorable, out of 10. 58% positive, 29% negative, 13% mixed. And... One person says that the the cinematography is great, the setting is great, everything else is bad. One person says it's written seemingly written by a 12-year-old. One person didn't think the that I'm um, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and guess. As far as I can tell, they're referring to Emma Corrine as cardboard and boring, as entertaining as pulling teeth. I mean, it's not supposed to be an entertaining performance, but some people don't. Yeah. It definitely is, yeah, if you're thinking, oh, female protagonist, you know, yeah, this is not a 100%, you know, this, it's not trying to make her character feel as as like oh this is you know wouldn't you love to date or be the or or no you know befriend this person in real life no this is you know it's it's more the the type of detective character that you can appreciate but you wouldn't necessarily want to hang out. like come on let's be honest we all love Sherlock Holmes would you actually want to hang out with him would you want to be I can't believe I'm blanking on his name. I, I read those books as a kid. Uh, 
Hold on. I'll I'll have it momentarily. This is this will not stand. Watson, would you actually want to be Watson and be condescended to constantly? Like, we want to watch him. We don't want to be him. We don't want to be around him. Now, on IMDb, this has a 7.3 out of 10. Based on 8,700 ratings, and 25.3 of them gave it an 8. 19.7 gave it 10, 16.5 gave it 7, 15.8 gave it 9, 7.6 gave it 6, 4.3 gave it 5, 4.2 gave it 1. Wow. See, again, I, I wish that they would just add a thing about what what was it about this that you hated so much that it was a 1 out of 10. Anyway, and how many episodes did you watch? Anyway, 2.7% um, gave it 4, 2.0 gave it 2, 3, uh, 1.9 gave it 3. There are currently 127 IMDb reviews, or 99, if you hide spoilers. And I have not yet done the, the count, but since there's not that much... Okay, let's see. So, of those 127... 12 gave it a 1, 10 gave it a 2, 13 gave it a 3, 10 gave it a 4, 14 gave it a 5, 14, another 14 gave it a 6, 7 gave it a 7, 6 gave it an 8, 17 gave it a 9, and 27 gave it a 10. So that, yeah, very much the, the, yeah, um, the, um, yeah, some people really loved it, some people really hated it. And, right, then we have the external reviews. Let's see. Okay, so there are, there's nine links right now, and it looks like six of them are in English and let's see then we have the right right um let's see yeah so the the one of the negative reviews says that the protagonist's only personality trait is having pink hair. Wow. I I don't think they know what a personality is. She has plenty of personality. It's just she's a very guarded, very, like, in a way, fragile person, but she has personality. And uh, one, one person says the show is full of implausibilities, and takes itself too seriously for them to be forgotten. And I, I would definitely say it is a show that requires you suspend your disbelief. The show is not full of special effects, but when there are special effects, they are completely convincing. I, I can't think of a single shot in this that actually felt like, you know, it, it's... There is some technology that like almost exists in the real world right now it's like just a you know very close to being invented and yeah so we don't know exactly what it's going to look like the the effects team had to work that out and yeah it it looks great there's several shots where they do that the the Jurassic Park trick the the original Jurassic Park where if we got a close-up of this, maybe it wouldn't look completely perfect. We'll have it from from a distance. You know, maybe the lighting isn't quite... Like, it's, it's lit enough that you can clearly make out what's going on, but it's not necessarily, like, you can see every nook and cranny, and, you know, and, and I felt that the show did a good enough job justifying why they're at a distance, like, you know, Jurassic Park... How close do you want to walk to an actual dinosaur, which, you know, if it flinches, it might crush you. So, 
the yeah. Um, I rate this eight red herrings keeping us guessing out of ten. And I think this is a show, you know, it's already the the a lot of the people who watched it, as mentioned when I talked about the the ratings and such, a lot of the people who love the who who might love this have already discovered it. I think it's possible that you know even more will discover, especially if you know the the yeah the creating the the duo who created it you know get to make either additional seasons or more shows and people go back and watch this. You know I can imagine that this is a this is something that because of the speculation about the the future it will. It of course risks aging poorly. It is possible that in the future we'll look back on this and be like, wow, like, that was really, really way off. But sadly, I think some of its pessimistic notions, uh, I think some of it will be proved to be accurate. And I try not to be a doomer. <sighs> yeah, I can, I can imagine this is one of those that when people discover it years down the line they'll they'll realize you know how prescient it was that is it for this review let me know in the comments what is your favorite like classic mystery you know it doesn't have to be Agatha Christie doesn't have to be Sherlock Holmes you know it can be something recent if that's yeah and yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one to more links to stuff like relevant playlists, a suggested review for you to watch on the screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. Recently reviewing thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one, but with the thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate video, since a movie's running time is significantly shorter than a show. In other words, if you're more videos like this, you're not. You can check out my back catalog, as well as catch me next week. I hope you enjoyed watching, as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.